My name's Michael Keneally and this is a very brief video to start you off in a relationship with the great goddess, the Morrigan, the goddess of sovereignty and of, and of war for the ancient Irish. You have to have already listened to my introductory video about how to approach goddesses and gods and how to share with me about the progress of this in the Druid Forest School course. So this video doesn't include any of the steps of preparation. We very much need our sovereignty. We very much need to be able to defend it. And for some of us, our start in life or our life lessons taught us to defeat our sovereignty, not to know how to stand up for ourselves. Sadly, many of the approaches to the Morrigan that I read and see about seem to be a justification for being me first, argumentative, endlessly criticising others, repetitively blog posting or whatever about all you know and how X, Y or Z is wrong. This is not what the Morrigan is about at all. Basically, the Tuadanan came to Ireland looking for a home. They had had to leave Ireland because of oppression and had journeyed the seas and learned vast wisdom. But they wanted to return. They wanted a homeland. They were tired of endlessly journeying. They sought alliances when they arrived, but those alliances went wrong and they were left with no alternative but to defend their place on the earth, to find their place on the face of the beautiful giving earth. They and their druids and king sought to avoid conflict, but it became unavoidable. In our life the Morrigan may come to us at a time when we have thrown away our life because we never stood up for ourselves because we weren't able to say who we were, what we want and need in a relationship, in a job, in a family, in life. To be able to have one's sovereignty and defend it is crucial. I don't believe that we're here in this life to simply detach from the workings of our emotions and our mind, to anaesthetise ourselves and to stop living. I don't believe we're here to form a gang, grouping or movement around a guru. We're here to manifest certain creative talents and skills, as indeed the ancient Vedic sages knew, because one of the disciplines I do readings in and teach is Vedic astrology. It's also being resurrected in Western astrology, the declaration of our incarnational life purpose. But we are here to express certain things. We're here to learn, to journey, to become. And it is so helpful to contact one of the gods and goddesses of the ancient Irish, each with their very special qualities and area of life. So as I said in the introductory video, 
I do recommend that you, you know, read a selection of head stuff about the history of contact with that goddess or god. But that in itself will get you nowhere. And you do need ideally a statue or a picture to relate to. To relate to through the day and to hold indeed special conversations and relationships with. So that when you get the clear appearance of the goddess and or the god in your mind's eye, you can call in that goddess and god into your consciousness wherever you are, when needed. And so, basically, I believe the Morrigan came to me, indeed as a time when it was right to understand my Mars. And I spent a lot of time relating to her. She changed the way I held my body and felt. Out of that time of relating came strategy, planning a particular vast project in my life with a view to reaping great achievements. I don't believe in surrender. At times we have to retreat from the world and surrender. But for most of us, those are only times of letting go, of letting things die in our lives. I know that I was born to achieve certain tasks in love, in family, in creativity, for example, in expression of myself, above all, in valuing myself. And I realise that I would never get there simply watching the play of my mind or, you know, prattling in a guru-orientated group. So, I'm going to try and zoom the camera in more and more so that you can see her face, what she is calling you to. So we'll see how we get on. Would you betray her insight with a lie about yourself or your life? Look at her measuring eyes. She never seeks destruction and war. But she knows when war has to be done as a last resort because she is responsible to sovereignty. <laughs> 